Um, good afternoon, this is Wanda McCants from Labor and Delivery. I am an LPN and I'm going to begin your childbirth tour. Um, we're on the outside of Labor and Delivery and I'd like to show you how to gain entrance when you come into the hospital for labor. We actually have a couple of parking lots that you can use. Um, the one that is open 24 hours a day is the Riley Road entrance and that's okay for you to park there. You'll have to do a long walk though, so if you park at the Riley Road entrance, you can get a wheelchair from the emergency room desk, you can get a wheelchair from the emergency, the information desk located on the first floor and proceed down a hallway. When you get to the third floor, you can go past the chapel and just make a left inside of the labor and delivery hallway. Um, when you come to the hallway, there is an entrance um, here that's locked. And in order to gain entrance, you'll just need to push um, the button here, and instructions are here, push the button here, and you hear the doorbell. Um, someone is going to answer you and probably ask you a couple of questions related to your exposure to COVID. Uh, if those answers are satisfactory, then they will tell you to come in. You'll see the green light flashing here. That means that the door has been unlocked. Thank you. Um, and then you can proceed to pull the door toward you to come inside, okay? Usually um, during the COVID, we've asked to have only one person uh, accompany you here. That individual will have to wait out here in the hallway um, while you come in and are greeted at the desk. But before we go there, we're going to stop at our nutrition area and I'm going to show you the kind of things that we have for you while you're in labor. So um, when you come in, uh, most of the time you will have not really known that you're going to be coming. You might not be an induction. So we just will think that you've already had something to eat and um, drink. While you're in labor though, we're gonna ask you to remain um, MPO, which means nothing by mouth except for ice and juice that we will say that you can have. So because of that, we have um, an ice machine here that we will fill up for you. And we also have popsicles and jello and um, a variety of sustenance that are for mama while she's um, laboring. So um, some applesauce, some fruit cocktail, juices and things like that. Um, now your um, family member won't be able to self-serve, so all you have to do is um, ask your nurse if you are a patient who can have um, jello or clear liquids. And if you are, then, then we'll go ahead and get those for you. So you don't have to bring any uh, those type of things to the hospital. Just let us know that you're a little, feeling a little hungry and we'll give you some jello or some juice. Don't consume any um, food though, unless your nurse has told you that it's okay for you to eat. But we're gonna go inside one of the labor rooms and I've taken the liberty of putting one um, together so you can get a good view of what the labor room looks like. Um, and I've also put out a couple of the birthing aids that we have. So here on the left-hand side of the room are located the items that we need to do a safe vaginal delivery. So you deliver, you labor, you deliver, and you recover all in this room together. And the whole family stays together, mom, baby, and um, the parent, they all stay together. There is a delivery table, and that delivery table packet contains all the instrumentation that we need to do a delivery. Um, there is a kit for the newborn and located over here and it just has some of the initial basic needs that we would have you know for a newborn and um, we have a infant resuscitator warmer that we use um, so that we can weigh your baby and measure and if when it's necessary of course it does the emergency treatment of your newborn should that become necessary so moms then are guided um, over to the bed, usually when you come in, you don't, you don't have to like lay down flat on your back or anything. So we want you to be able to be comfortable. So this bed is a birthing bed and it's designed so that you can sit all the way up as if you were in fact in a chair. So the head of the bed goes up. You can, uh, I recommend bringing more pillows because um, pillows are something that moms really like to help make themselves more comfortable. But the bed goes all the way up and the feet go all the way down so that it becomes more chair-like. And every mom, of course, experiences something a little bit different. 
But I'm just gonna show you the features of the bed to show you that it can break all the way down um, if you need it to. Now the bottom of the bed, I'm gonna just push this table away. The bottom of the bed is fully removable so that it can be out of our way. And it has a space for foot rest so that the mom can rest her legs um, when she's uh, not actually pushing. So we can put the head of the bed back. Now some of the midwives will usually leave everything intact and they'll in fact sit uh, in front of the mother right on the end of the bed and deliver the baby from there. So you don't actually have to be up in uh, any stirrups or anything. So don't be surprised if the midwife sits at the end of the bed or the physician sits at the end of the bed. Um, we have a couple of birthing aids for you so you don't have to bring anything to the hospital. So if your plan was one that you wanted to be able to see yourself pushing, we have a mirror that you just ask your nurse and she'll bring that out for us to use. Now that's for the second stage of labor now, so when you're pushing and trying to deliver your baby, we can put this at the end of the bed so that mama can actually see what she's doing. Um, we also have the birthing ball. Um, you'll get a nice shot of that. And that's a device that we use. The mother actually sits on it. People know it as an exercise ball, but we call it the birthing ball. And uh, not every mother will utilize one, but if you want to use one in labor and your baby looks great on the monitor, there won't be a problem with us putting you on a birthing ball. And so don't bring any, we already have them. We also have what's called the peanut, which is another birthing aid um, that we use during that first stage of labor to help you progress in labor and get the scent of your, of your baby. So we have all those things already here and already available. Because labor can be long, prolonged, and last a few days, We've already put in a uh, sleeping area for the partner. So whenever um, time comes and you need to take a nap, then this couch actually flips over um, to a mattress and you just ask the nurse for uh, some linen so that you can rest. So this is for the um, partner to rest. And it's just really pretty easy. You just kind of pull the strap and it just kind of flips up and over, just like that. And then we just make it up and it's nice and comfortable for um, the parent. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back down. Don't forget about those pillows. All right, that's that for that. Um, we didn't take a little peek in the bathroom because one of the things that a mom likes can do to relieve some of her labor discomfort is shower. So we do have shower chairs and um, just talk to your provider and your nurse if one of your wishes is to use hydrotherapy as a method of controlling your discomfort. We've already done the tour of the labor rooms, but I didn't want to forget to mention that when you do come in, we let you come into labor and delivery, we're gonna ask for you to just have a seat here while we collect some brief information from you, some demographic information, and open up your electronic health record. So there'll be someone here to greet you and uh, help you fill out that form for us. And all you need is your CAC card, and um, that's all we'll need from you. CAC or your dependent ID card will be fine. Thank you. I'm just having you take a look at our evaluation area because most of our moms who come in to be checked for labor or other maternity issues will come into the triage evaluation area. And there are um, three beds here for us to do an evaluation to see if you're in labor or whatever brought you into it. Maybe your water broke or maybe your baby's not moving. This would be a place where you would come to you know, be checked out and evaluated. And if we need to admit you, we will. And if it's you know, a false alarm, then we'll give you some precautions and, you know, perhaps send you home. So this is evaluation.
So as we go around, Labor and Delivery has um, eight labor beds, two operating rooms, a three bed at this time is five bed, but right now because of the COVID pro protocols, we've restricted the beds down to three for the evaluation and two beds that are aside for the PACU, which is post anesthesia care unit. Those are used for our cesarean sections that are planned. Of course, every room can be used for uh, labor and can be used for post anesthesia recovery, but we have two set aside just um, for that. So that's a total of 11 rooms. So the hall that we're on, the hallway we're on right now is our transfer hallway. Cesarean sections and vaginal deliveries are usually here for about two, two and a half hours prior to transfer to the woman newborn care unit. So when you get on this hallway, you're usually on your way out and the whole family will travel together. We're going to actually stop by so we can take a look at our operating rooms. We are outside of one of the operating room suites and the support person um, will stay outside the suite until anesthesia has given us the all clear to bring the support person into the room. So that is a, something set aside for them and um, we will proceed with mom into the operating room. So we're just going to take a quick look around inside of here. Um, so when you're in the operating room, um, Again, there'd only be just the one support person would that be allowed entrance into the operating room with mom. Um, and of course, at first she's brought in by herself as we prepare her for the surgery. Um, and then once she's inside of the room and the anesthesia has been safely administered under control, the surgical team will come in um, and finish getting mama draped and ready. And then we'll um, send out a nurse to escort the support person to um, come on inside the room for the delivery. Um, and we do allow uh, photography um, inside of both of our labor rooms that we were in and also in the operating room. No um, tripods or uh, large pieces of equipment, but certainly a phone um, is adequate to take some pretty good pictures. I will ask though that you get the permission of the team prior to snapping um, photography. So, and nurses will help you um, get really good pictures, especially with cord cuttings and things like that. So, um, we don't want you to experience anything different than you would have in the, in the labor room. It's just a slightly different area. Um, so, we have this one set up for twins. Um, in fact, we can actually set it up for triplets because we, we do have uh, uh, triplets as well. And these are just some additional things that we have to use for the mom who's going through surgery, um, some, uh, some additional um, disinfectant that will be required, um, full of catheterization, um, and a, a, a little grounding pad that helps uh, to keep any sparks or things like that down. So it's a little bit more equipment in here that mom will have on that she would have on if she was just in her labor room. But, um, you know, we'll do skin to skin in this room um, so that mom will experience the same skin to skin that she would have while she's inside of a labor room. And when the baby is born, the baby will be brought over to the warmer, which is um, just off to our right. Um, just showing some more of the um, equipment because there's quite a bit of equipment in this room. So the newborn will then go over to one of the warmers and you've seen those in the labor room at the same time. The, the, so there for resuscitation should it be necessary. Um, what's a little different about the labor rooms is the number of people that are in here for um, surgery. So there's uh, quite, a, quite a number of people, so it seems quite busy when, they're, when we're in here for surgery. 